2. The two natures of Christ, their reality and integrity. 1. The humanity of Christ. a. Its reality. This may be shown as follows. a. He expressly called himself, and was called, man. John 8 verse 40, Ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, Acts 2 verse 22, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God unto you, wrong. 5 15, The one man, Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 21, By man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead, 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, One mediator also between God and man, himself man, Christ Jesus. Compare the genealogies in Matt. 1 colon 1 17 and Luke 3 verses 23 to 38, the former of which proves Jesus to be in the royal line, and the latter of which proves him to be in the natural line, of succession from David, the former tracing back his lineage to Abraham, and the latter to Adam. Christ is therefore the son of David, and of the stock of Israel. Compare also the phrase, son of man, e.g., in Matt. 2028, which, however much it may mean in addition, certainly indicates the veritable humanity of Jesus. Compare, finally, the term, flesh, equals human nature, applied to him in John 1 verse 14, and the word became flesh, and. In 1 John 4 verse 2, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in. The flesh is of God. Jesus is the true Son of Man whom he proclaimed himself to be. This implies that he is the representative of all humanity. Consider for a moment what is implied in your being a man. How many parents had you? You answer, two. How many grandparents? You answer, four. How many great-grandparents? Eight. How many great-great-grandparents? Sixteen. So the number of your ancestors increases as you go further back, and if you take in only twenty generations, you will have to reckon yourself as the outcome of more than a million progenitors. The name Smith, or Jones, which you bear, represents only one strain of all those million, you might almost as well bear any other name. Your existence is more an expression of the race at large than of any particular family or line. What is true of you, was true, on the human side, of the Lord Jesus. In him all the lines of our common humanity converged. He was the Son of Man, far more than. He was son of Mary, C. A. H. Strong, sermon before the London. Baptist Congress. B. He possessed the essential elements of human nature as at present constituted, a material body and a rational soul. Matt. 26.38, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, John 11 verse 33, He groaned in the spirit, Matt. 26.26, This is my body, 28. This is my blood, Luke 24 verse 39, a spirit of not flesh and bones, as ye behold me having, Hebrews 2 verse 14, since then the children are sharers in flesh and blood, he also himself in like manner partook of the same, 1 John 1 verse 1, that which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, that which we beheld, and our hands handled, concerning the word of life, for colon 2, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Yet Christ was not all men in one, and he did not illustrate the development of all human powers. Laughter, painting, literature, marriage, these provinces he did not invade. Yet we do not regard these as absent from the ideal man. The perfection of Jesus was the perfection of self-limiting love. For our sakes he sanctified himself, John 17 verse 19, or separated himself from much that in an ordinary man would have been excellence and delight. He became an example to us. By doing God's will and reflecting God's character in his particular environment and in his particular mission, that of the world's Redeemer, C. H. E. Robbins, Ethics of the Christian Life, 259-303. Mobili, Atonement and Personality, 86-105, Christ was not a man only amongst men. His relation to the human race is not that he was another specimen, differing, by being another, from every one but himself. His relation to the race was not a differentiating but a consummating relation. He was not generically but inclusively man. The only relation that can at all directly compare with it is that of Adam, who in a real sense was humanity. That complete indwelling and possessing of even one other, which the yearnings of man toward man imperfectly approach, is only possible in any fullness of the words.
To that spirit of man which is the spirit of God, to the spirit of God become, through incarnation, the spirit of man. If Christ's humanity were not the humanity of deity, it could not stand in the wide, inclusive, consummating relation, in which it stands, in fact, to the humanity of all other men. Yet the center of Christ's being as man was not in himself but in God. He was the expression, by willing reflection, of another. See, he was moved by the instinctive principles, and he exercised the active powers, which belong to a normal and developed humanity, hunger, thirst, weariness, sleep, love, compassion, anger, anxiety, fear, groaning, weeping, prayer. Matt 4 colon 2, he afterward hungered, John 19 verse 28, I thirst, for colon 6, Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus by the well, Matt 8 24, the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep, Mark 10 21, Jesus looking upon him loved him, Matt. 9 36, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, Mark 3 verse 5, looked round about on them with anger, being grieved at the hardening of their heart, Hebrews 5 verse 7, supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, John 12 verse 27, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, 11 33, he groaned in the spirit, 35, Jesus wept, Matt 14 23, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. Hebrews 2 verse 16, For it is not doubtless angels whom he rescueth, but he rescueth the seed of Abraham, Kendrick. Professor J. P. Silvernail, on the elocution of Jesus, finds the following intimations as to his delivery. It was characterized by 1. Naturalness, sitting, as at Capernaum, 2. Deliberation, cultivates responsiveness in his hearers, 3. Circumspection, he looked at Peter, 4. Dramatic action, woman taken in adultery, 5. Self-control, authority, poise, no. Vociferation, denunciation of scribes and Pharisees. All these are manifestations of truly human qualities and virtues. The epistle of James, the brother of our Lord, with its exaltation of a meek, quiet and holy life may be an unconscious reflection of the character of Jesus, as it had appeared to James during the early days at Nazareth. So John the Baptist's exclamation, I have need to be baptized of thee, Matt 3 14, may be an inference from his intercourse with Jesus in childhood and youth. d. He was subject to the ordinary laws of human development, both in body and soul, grew and waxed strong in spirit asked questions, grew in wisdom and stature, learned obedience, suffered being tempted, was made perfect through sufferings. Luke 2 verse 40, the child grew, and waxed strong, filled with wisdom, 46, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both hearing them, and asking them questions, here, at his twelfth year, he appears first to become fully conscious that he is the scent of God, the Son of God, 49, know ye not that I must be in my father's house. Lit. In the things of my father, 52, advanced in wisdom and stature, Hebrews 5 verse 8, learned obedience by the things which he suffered, 2 18, in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted, 10, it became him, to make the author of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Kebel, was not our Lord a little child, taught by degrees to pray, by father dear and mother mild instructed day by day? Adamson, the mind in Christ, to Henry Drummond Christianity was the crown of the evolution of the whole universe. Jesus' growth in stature and in favor with God and men is a picture in miniature of the age-long evolutionary process. Forrest, Christ of history and of experience, 185, the incarnation of the Son was not his one revelation of God, but the interpretation to sinful humanity of all his other revelations of God in nature and history and moral experience, which had been darkened by sin. The Logos, incarnate or not, is there as well as there of creation. Andrew Murray, Spirit of Christ, 26, 27, though now baptized himself, he cannot yet baptize others. He must first, in the power of his baptism, meet temptation and overcome it, must learn obedience and suffer, yea, through the eternal Spirit, offer himself a sacrifice to God and his will, then only could he afresh receive the Holy Spirit as the reward of obedience, with the power to baptize all who belong to him. See Acts 2 verse 33, being therefore by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath poured forth this, which ye see and hear. 
e, he suffered and died, bloody sweat, gave up his spirit, his side pierced, and straightway there came out blood and water. Luke 22 verse 44, being in an agony he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became as it were great drops of blood falling down upon the ground, John 19 verse 30, he bowed his head, and gave up his spirit, 34, one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and straightway there came out blood and water, held by Stroud, physical cause of our Lord's death, to be proof that Jesus died of a broken heart. Anselm, Curdeus Homo, 1 colon 9-19, the Lord is said to have grown in wisdom and favor with God, not because it was so, but because he acted as if it were so. So he was exalted after death, as if this exaltation were on account of death. But we may reply, resolve all signs of humanity into mere appearance, and you lose the divine nature as well as the human, for God is truth and cannot act a lie. The babe, the child, even the man, in certain respects, was ignorant. Jesus, the boy, was not. Making crosses, as in Overbeck's picture, but rather yokes and plows, as Justin Martyr relates, serving a real apprenticeship in Joseph's workshop, Mark 6 verse 3, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? See Holman Hunt's picture, The Shadow of the Cross, in which not Jesus, but only Mary, sees the shadow of the cross upon the wall. He lived a life of faith, as well as of prayer, Hebrews 12 verse 2, Jesus the author, captain, prince, and perfecter of our faith, dependent upon scripture, which was much of it, as P.S. 16 and 118, and is 49, 50, 61, written for him, as well as about him. C. Park, Discourses, 297 to 327, Deutsch, Remains, 131. The boldest transcendental flight of the Talmud is its saying, God prays. In Christ's humanity, united as it is to deity, we have the fact answering to this piece of Talmudic poetry.